Pressure venting is very important in the design of the system. Um, what we've got to bear in mind is that when any gaseous system, you know, whether it's an inert, an inert gas, whether it's CO2, whether it's a hail of carbon, whether it was hail on back in the past, what will happen as that agent discharges into the space, it will create a pressure change within that space. That pressure change, if not mitigated, could and will affect the stru structural integrity of the enclosure. The protected enclosure will require some form of pressure relief measures. We've actually got, let's say, three general categories of system that we would apply. So the conventional inert gas systems, so these are the systems that don't use any form of regulated flow technology. What you see that when that, those systems discharge is that you get a very high initial pressure spike as the, as the peak flow goes into the pipe system. That dissipates after a few seconds and then drops down to a much lower flow in the seconds after the, the, the peak spike is achieved. So we'll probably see that, pike speak, that, that uh, pressure spike for four or five seconds into the discharge. But because that is relevant, that is actually what you need to then determine the integrity of the, um, uh, of the venting system and also just going more into the design of the system, actually the pipe sizing and other, other aspects. The more recent um, introduction of the inert gas systems or the constant flow systems like just do a little advert, like the Tyco high flow, high flow system that you'd see on the, uh, on the Tyco stand. These are using a, um, uh, what we call a regulated or constant flow technology. What they do is that they discharge the gas at a constant pressure and a constant flow rate throughout the critical period of the discharge, uh, the discharge time. What that does there is that avoids this peak spike and avoids the need to build in such a, an extensive pressure venting requirement. And interestingly, the chemical agents actually work in a different manner. The chemical agents actually experience both a negative pressure spike and a positive pressure spike. So the venting systems required for chemical systems at least need to take into account that in, in most cases you will get some form of negative pressure created before the a switch over to the positive uh, pressure. And so many venting systems could actually use dual wave uh, venting. Again, the, the quantity of chemical agents that's used is generally less than the, than the volumes required for inert gas systems, and the venting require, requirements are generally smaller, but it's still an impo important consideration for the designer to take that into account. Detailed calculations for the venting requirements, you can actually refer to an FIA publication, which is guidance on the pressure relief post-discharge venting uh, protected by gaseous firefighters system. So that's a very good reference document. That identifies how you calculate pressure vent requirements, the various conditions and the types of vents and devices that you may find. So just going back to the, the checklist, the input parameters to work on the pressure venting calculation method are the extinguishing agent, so the physical properties of the agent, protected enclosure volume, extinguishing system, discharge time, extinguishing concentration and the relative humidity of the enclosure. If the enclosure strength is known, so if, if you are provided with information that says the enclosure could withstand a pressure of, for example, 250 pascals or 500 pascals, then you can actually calculate the total vent area requirement. If the total vent area is known, then it's possible to calculate the expected pressure excursion following an extinguishing system discharge. So you already know where the, the, the pressure vent area or the vent area, then you can actually calculate what pressure you may experience within that space. But well, the main way of determining that is through the room integrity te test or the door fan pressurisation test. So actually, uh, determining the vent area is actually uh, it's actually a process that can be done uh, using known and, and trying and tested uh, methods. I'll just touch just the last couple of slides on detection systems because when we talk about um, a, a gas extinguishing system, a gas extinguishing system is the mechanical part of the system but you need some methods and, and means to actually control those systems. 95 to 99 percent of gaseous extinguishing systems that are installed globally actually have some form of detection system connected to it. Typically uh, an automatic detection system system and there are various ways to, um, to actually configure those systems. Typically these are the components you would see on a, on a detection system. So if we take this as a, 
elevation of a protected space with a room volume, a floor void volume and a ceiling void volume. What is necessary there is that you've got to consider that you've got to detect fires in all three spaces. It's not acceptable just to detect fires in the room space and hope that if there's a, a fire in the floor void that the, the smoke or the products of combustion will get to the detection in the room space. So you need to configure those systems so that there are detection devices in each of the uh, relevant zones. Most gaseous extinguishing systems are, are organised on what we call a, a double knock or coincidence operation. So there's two separate zones of detection. The first zone of detection could well be very similar to the standard fire alarm system that you would see in, in the office buildings. That would initially give an indication that there is something wrong, that there's some fire event occurring there that either needs further investigation, generally it means evacuation of the building. That will sound alarms. And then if the fire grows in, in size and intensity, it would then trigger what we call the coincident zone or the, the second zone on the system. And only when you've got this coincidence operation, so two separate zones of detection, picking up a fire, and with the system in, automat in automatic mode, would you then go into the release sequence. The release sequence, controlled by the control panel, would then look to instigate an appropriate time delay, sound of the uh, warning signs distinct from the main fire alarm, and then eventually uh, cause the electrical operation of the gas system, and then you would get full discharge. The systems have many other features to uh, shut down air conditioning units, other devices that may be relevant and uh, important in the overall efficiency of the system. This is a, a, a typical schematic of a system. So on this one we have uh, system cylinders, we have the control panel of various devices, we have discharge nozzles and detectors, and there is a, uh, a legend there showing the various, um, the various key components that would make up, make up a system. And that, that really would be a fairly standard system complying with both the British and the European, uh, the European standards shows the cross zoning of the, of the system. Generally what would happen is that the detectors, whilst they may be of, uh, of the same type, they are spaced apart from each other so that you don't get two detectors on the, on, on the same zone going into alarm and then not triggering your coincidence operation. Uh, so they are actually configured in such a way that you do, you do get a true coincidence and uh, double knock situation.